Let's take a run through problem 12 2A. This has us doing vertical analysis. These are also called common sized financial statements. And the idea of these financial statements is if I have two companies that are very different sizes, they can be difficult to compare. If I run a little coffee shop here in my hometown of Kamloops and I want to compare my financial statements to Starbucks, they just don't compute, right? I might have a couple hundred thousand dollars in sales where Starbucks has billions and billions of dollars. So these, the numbers don't match. And vertical analysis is the way to compare two companies of different sizes or one way to do it. Uh, as the name suggests, we just did horizontal analysis where we compared year over year financial performance. Vertical analysis, we're doing it up and down on the page. So we'll I'll show you what we mean as we jump into this problem. Harpreet Gill is concerned about his company's financial performance and financial position. He obtained the financial statements of his largest competitor, Hossein Inc., and notes the company is over 10 times larger than his, in terms of sales anyway. You can see Gill's sales are 400 grand and Hossein's 5 mil. Um, so it's making the numbers difficult to compare. Below is condensed financial information from Hossein and Gill. And it says complete the vertical analysis for both companies in the table above. Complete the columns labeled Hossein vertical and Gill vertical. Round your answers to the nearest tenth of a percent. Okay, so here's how vertical analysis works. We vertical, as the name suggests, means we're just looking at one column at a time. You know, horizontal, we're comparing left to right. Here we're looking up and down on the page. And so that means, and I, I'd advise you to do this ignore the other company as you're doing it. So you just do one company at a time because it's vertical. So I'm going to ignore Gill. Don't you scratch it out like this. I'm doing this because I'm on a digital tablet. I will erase my scratching out in a minute, but I'm going to pretend Gill doesn't exist. A vertical analysis, you set the sales on the income statement and total assets on the balance sheet, you set it as 100%. And then you look at every other number as a percentage of that. So let's start with sales for Hossein. We just say, okay, well, I'm going to call that 100%. And the idea is when I do the same for Gill, I set Gill's as 100%. I can compare percentages where the dollar amounts aren't really comparable because they're just so different in size. Cost of goods sold, 2.1 million divided by 5 million is 42%. 2.9 divided by 5, I can see, is 58%. 2.2 million divided by 5 is, uh, what is that, 44%. 700 divided by 5 million is going to be 14%. I should be checking my numbers here. 700 divided by 5 million. Yeah, 14%. Okay, I'm feeling good then. Uh, 60,000 divided by 5 million. This is a small number. 1.2%. Uh, 640 divided by 5 million. 12.8%. 150 divided by 5 million, 3%. And 490 divided by 5 million, 9.8%. Uh, okay, so we've done Hossein's income statement. Let's do Hossein's balance sheet, and then we'll do the same for Gil. So the balance sheet, you set the total assets to 100%. So you go, okay, well, this 4 million is uh, represents 100%. Then every number is a percentage of that. So 1 divided by 4 is, of course, 25%. And again, the math here, 1 million divided by 4 million. Uh, this one's going to be 75%. 3 divided by 4 is 75%. What about 500 divided by 4 million? It's going to be 12.5%. 12.5%, 1.5 million divided by 4 million. You might notice I'm putting 1,500 divided by 4,000 in the calculator. The reason is if there are, everything's three zeros, you can just lop off those three zeros. The percentages will be the same. If you want to put them in as full numbers, you certainly can do that, but just saves a, a few zeros. 12.5 plus 37.5 or 2 divided by 4 is 50%. 2 divided by 4 is 50%, and of course, 4 divided by 4 is 100%. Okay, so we've done Hossein. What does this mean 
nothing. Doesn't mean much to me. You could compare Hossein to industry averages. You could compare Hossein to one of their larger competitors. You could compare Hossein to something else. But the point of this is you got to compare it to something. So in fact, the story of this question is Gil gets a hold of Hossein's financials and they want to compare and they're like, oh, the numbers are so different. Well, let's redo gills as percentages and then maybe we can compare the percentages and learn something. So 400 uh, becomes our 100% number. We set sales to 100%, so that's 100%. Uh, 120 divided by 400, 30%. 280 divided by 400, 70%, 130 divided by 400, 32 and a half percent, 150 divided by 400, 37 and a half percent, 10 divided by 400, it's gonna be two and a half percent, 140 divided by 400, 35%, 30 divided by 400, seven and a half? Yeah, seven and a half percent. And 110 divided by 400, 27 and a half percent. Okay, so we've done Gill's vertical analysis. Uh, let's do the balance sheet. Now we did the income statement, let's do the balance sheet. So uh, we set again the total assets to 100%. And now again, we're doing vertical. We don't, we pretend Hossein doesn't exist for these calculations. We're just doing GIL. 75 divided by 250, 30%. 175 divided by 250 is going to be 70%. Looking at the current liabilities, uh, 60, again, divide, every, divide everything by 250, it's 24%. 120 divided by uh, 250, 48%. 180 divided by 250, oh, not 280, divided by 250 is 72%. 70 divided by 250 is going to be 28%. 70 divided by 250, yep, 28%. And of course, 250 divided by 250 is 100%. Okay, so we've we've filled in the table, but uh, this is always the point in the question where my students get annoyed with me. They go, I can fill it in, but you always ask me to comment on this or, you know, point something interesting out. And I, I don't, I'm not too picky here as the professor. I just want them to say, what's jumping out at you? And so how would I figure out like what's jumping out at me? And here I actually blank out in my mind, right? You don't scratch this out on the test question, but I blank out the dollar amounts and I just look at the percentages and I sort of say, well, which one of these do I prefer and why if I didn't know anything else? So let's go down the line here. The first thing that jumps out at me is gross profit percentage is quite different. Like costs are different and therefore gross profit. So, so you kind of look at the relationship between COGS and gross profit. And as far as that goes, Gills is like way better. You would, you know, if you didn't know the dollar amounts, Hossein makes way more money than Gills because it's way bigger. You would way prefer Gills. Uh, uh, costs and margins is gross profit. Interestingly, you would also prefer Gill's operating expenses. They're significantly lower. And these are sort of key numbers that jump out at me. The rest, I actually don't look at as much, but the, what's in yellow and what's in pink are like key numbers to be considered. And across the board, Gills are better. Gill has better margins and has better control over its expenses. If I didn't know the dollar amounts, I would say to Gil, your financial performance is terrific. The only thing you should be driving for is to generate more sales. Maybe Gil's price is way higher or something, right? Like maybe that's why it doesn't get as many sales as Hossein and its margins are higher. But I would be telling Gil like, uh, this, this is a good looking income statement compared to your competitor. And I guess the bottom line, it certainly shows through the profits, right? Gill's profits are significantly higher as a percentage, not as a dollar amount. You can see Hossein makes like five times the profit of Gill, but as a dollar amount, Gills are better. So comment on this. If I were asking a student or expecting this on a test, I would expect them to call out really one or two of the items I just outlined, you know, say, 
Gil's costs are significantly lower than Hossein's as evidenced by blah, 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 right? As evidenced by the cost of goods sold being 30% where Hossein's is 42, or as evidenced by operating expenses being 32% where Hossein's are 44%. And, you know, you'd be delivering good news. Gil is a real person. Gil asked you to uh, take a look at things and you'd say, your financial performance looks really good here. The only thing I would say is, you know, you don't get this from vertical analysis, but, you know, what can we do to increase our sales, right? <laughs> like the, the rest of the income statement is terrific. Uh, in terms of the balance sheet, actually a different tale. So I tend to look at two things here. And one is just the current ratio. So like current assets compared to current liabilities. And again, pretend I don't see the dollars. I just see percentages. Uh, so scratch that out and scratch that out. Uh, Hossein has double the current assets as current liabilities. Means can pay the bills. Gil, it's a little dicier. So Hossein's liquidity is better. The other thing to look at on a balance sheet is just how much debt they have, how much leverage compared to equity. So Hossein's debt equals the equity, the liabilities equals the shareholders equity. Gill has a lot more liabilities than equity. And that's a sign of risk. Some finance professors might tell you risk is good. Debt is good. This accounting professor in my class, when I'm telling my students, I'd say risk a like this debt should be sort of analyzed in a negative way you should say okay this is more leverage more risk is a problem at least that's how i see it. and i'm bringing my own biases to the table when i when i say that but certainly we can say i think conclusively looking at this that hossein's balance sheet is in better condition than gill's gill has a lot more debt and a lot uh, significantly less liquidity. So those are the, the, the thing I've highlighted in yellow. It's sort of two lines combine for one point in, of analysis and the two pink lines also combine for a little bit of analysis. So uh, maybe the reason my students don't like this is because I talk for like five minutes and they're like, okay, what's the sentence I can write here? So let me think of a sentence to write. I would say uh, Hussein's liquidity is better as evidenced by it has a better ratio of current assets to current liabilities. I think that's okay in terms of, you know, a sentence. Uh, I might also say uh, Gil is more highly leveraged, which means Gil has more debt, and that means Gil is riskier. So I prefer Gil's income statement, but I way prefer Hossein's balance sheet. And that would be my feedback to my friend, Mr. Gil. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. I hope the video helped. Hit the thumbs up on your way out of here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.